Thank you all for coming this morning. So today we have four different presentations from different startup business cases. So following on from last Tuesday where you're presented where you are at midterm, is a couple of presentations now which are, well, one from Jena and Lurker on AuroClean, which was their uh, Venture Cup winning uh, project and presentation. And then we're going to move on to a, a presentation by Rasmus, wherever he is, Rasmus Davidson, uh, for his uh, Black Silicon Solar project, also a Venture Cup winning project. So hopefully from those two you'll be able to gauge how far you've got to get to by the end of the course, or at least put yourself a, a goal to where you'd like to get to. Uh, following that, after another break, we have a presentation from Tommy Albers, who's the CEO of Podio, who's going to come and give you a 45-minute presentation. So I think he hopes for a bit of a dialogue format, so if any of you got any criticisms of Podio, you're welcome to uh, uh, jump in. Um, and then finally, we have a presentation from Torben Anderson, the CCO from Better Place. Uh, Better Place, if you don't know, is the electric uh, battery for uh, urban motoring. So, without further ado, uh, if we could give a, a warm round of applause for our, our student helpers, uh, Jeanne and Le, for the first presentation. Can you then there? No? Yeah. Ah, yes, too. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, we hope that this presentation will uh, uh, inspire you in your own project and all your future work. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, just uh, wait and ask them uh, in the end of the presentation. Yeah, this is the agenda. Uh, first of all, I would like to present the team behind OraClean. And uh, then, Shanna, she will talk about the, or present the original presentation from the final of the Venture Cup. Um, after that, she will talk about the, the business plan in more detail. And I will talk about how it all started and our entire process. And Shanna, she will end up talking about how it all ended. Mm. Um, and then we have uh, 10 learnings. Um, yeah, before. Actually, we all start. We can. I would just like to tell you that the name Oroclean, if anybody who do not know Oro, but it's a, in Spanish it means gold. So it's about the clean gold, and that's what our project is all about. But this is the team, and this is me and Shanna, and moreover we have Trina and Jacob, um, and we all from uh, DTU and uh, all studied design and innovation. And had went into, or oh, yeah, was following the same class. And um, here at our master, we went to an exchange program to the US, and we all attended the same course and ended up in the same group. And that was, uh, yeah, how it all started. So, um, yeah, now Shan, she would like to do uh, the pitch, and uh, based on the original slides from the Venture Cup um, final and uh, maybe I should just say that it was actually Jacob who presented our pitch but um, yeah we'll try to to uh, come up with a pitch similar to that uh, based on these slides and what we remember. Yes. So you ready? <laughs> ready Shanna? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. The pitch. <laughs> Welcome to this presentation of OraClean. My name is Jenne, and I will walk you through this four-minute pitch. Mercury is on the top 10 pollution problems in the world. 30% of this mercury pollution comes from small-scale miners in rural areas in South America, Africa, and Asia. What they do is they pour mercury into a pan where the mercury reacts with the gold and it creates an amalgam. They take up this amalgam and burn off the mercury. The mercury vaporizes into the air, travels the atmosphere and gets into the food chain. This problem affects millions of people, creating kidney problems, memory loss 
and learning disabilities. We have a solution to this problem called OraClean. OraClean is a low-tech centrifuge which built on proven technology and we will target the miners. We will sell this centrifuge for 11% less than what they pay for the mercury. Additionally, they will get 30% more for, from the gold because it's cleaner. The middleman will be the refiner. He will get an increase in income of 20%. We will produce this centrifuge locally for 150 Danish kroner. So with this solution, we have the unique possibility of eliminating 30% of the world's mercury pollution. The business model builds on a pay-per-use contract production model, which means that we, OraClean, will lease out this product to the refiner, who is the middleman. He will rent out the product to the miner. The miner will sell his gold back to the refiner, and he will refine the gold and sell it to the gold shop. With this model, we create a closed loop and ensure that the product will not get lost. By having this low-tech solution, we have calculated that we can break even within two years. After one year at market, we will expand to the next market. And our main markets are South America, Africa and Asia. There are 15 to 20 million miners. The first year, startup expenses will be 5 million Danish kroner and we will earn 3.5 million. We have a lot of partners, for example, Geo Center Copenhagen. We have collaborated with professors at the Danish Technical University, RPI in the US and EFAT in Colombia. So, mercury is a growing problem. We have a technology we know is feasible. We have a business plan that has proven to be successful in similar environments and last. OraClean is a high efficient and very profitable solution. So, OraClean doing good by doing well. <laughs> yes. Woo! And now I'll tell you just a little bit about the business plan who got us to the final. Um, this is uh, the table of content. Maybe it's a bit different from what you see at Venture Cup. That's because we have started with sending in the business plan to a Walmart competitions and a lot of other competitions. So it has developed over time and some appendices. I'll just go through some examples of what we have put in and just to show you. This is the business model in the business plan. So it's a bit more advanced in the business plan because we simplified it to make it easier to communicate. But here you see the green is some of the collaboration partners. You see the gold shops, which we have divided in green gold shops and normal gold shops because we see an increasing market for green gold. Yeah, and the main point about this business model is creating this closed loop. Then we have some arguments to back up the feasibility. We have a letter from a professor in RPI in the United States stating that this technology is feasible and it's possible to scale down this big centrifuge into a small centrifuge. We have a picture of the gold from GeoCenter where you can see a big difference between the clean gold and the gold containing mercury. Then we had a very, uh, we used a lot of time explaining this implementation strategy because that's the key point in getting this product to the market in these rural areas. So it's about creating a sustainable system before you move on to the next community by ensuring that the miner has a really short return on, or short time before he gets return on investment. Finding some local champions who will drive the motivation 
in the community and creating a win-win situation for all actors involved. So no one will work against you. Then we have the current status in the business plan where we just show the activities we have already done. So we showed that we have already filed for US patent. We have competed in other competition, tried to get funding. We have prepared a field trip and done other activities. And then we state what we will do in the future. We have, uh, the way we showed our market was to uh, divide it into a primary market and a secondary market. Then we have the size of the market, the volume in dollars, and then how, what is the estimated market size we think we can get on this market. We have the competitors. The main competitor is Mercury. It's not a centrifuge, it's not a mechanical device, but it's what we are up against. So this is a competitor as well. We did a SWOT and that was just our way of very simple, show who are the main competitors and who, what are the strengths and weaknesses. To back up the business plan and all the other arguments, in our appendix we have this value chain mapping where you can see all the transfers of value and what is exchanged between all the actors in the value chain. We have marked where we will influence this value chain and what amount of money we will affect with. Shortly, we had some financials. We did an income statement and a cash flow just to show what comes into the company and what goes out. And when we will break even. So our break even point is based on these financials. Yes. Yeah. Um, then I would like to talk about the, the entire process we went through, how it all started. And it's a really dark picture, but the, it all started at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in the US, in the New York State, um, at the private technical university. Um, and here we met Bert Swersey, and he's a professor in this course, Inventor Studio. And he's probably one of the professors that we will never forget because he's really enthusiastic and uh, motivating. And he always told us that we should think big. And he told us like several times, you can actually do this. And he, he ha has this American hat put on the really American uh, mentality, which was really great. And he didn't just want us to hand in an academic exercise. Uh, of course, we should, but he really wanted us to see us succeed. And he wanted us to make this business idea uh, be, become a reality. Um, so yeah, he, he was really a, a great professor. And of course, we. We used a lot of different kind of methods during uh, our project, but it was all like basic uh, engineering skills and it was much about learning by doing and hands-on activities. And, and what really yeah, what char hmm. characterized. <laughs> characterized all these uh, methods was that it was a part of an iterative process so uh, many of the methods were used over and over again, and we kept on getting more data and uh, improving the, all the details. Yeah, and Bert Swersey, he, uh, he told us that we should really look into the problem and start by doing that, not just focus on, on the product, but find a problem that affects millions of people. So that was like our sta starting point. And then we really had to understand the context around the product or the thing we were looking into. And he said that it's just not just about, uh, it shouldn't just be not, uh, nice to have, but it should actually be something that we need to have. And moreover, he said that a threat is the most powerful motivation factor. And it's, I don't know, it's just interesting to think that is first when something really bad happens that we can all put on our 
creative head and be, yeah, come up with really great innovative solutions sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Then he said that uh, we should think of uh, how it becomes relevant to all of us and scale the problem up. So what's in it for me? So first of all, of course, it's a huge problem and uh, uh, something really awful for the local miners and they all get really sick and have too high mercury content. Um, but it's also a problem for you and me and the rest of the world because 95% of all this mercury actually goes into the environment. And like Shanda told, it gets into the atmosphere and goes into the food chain and suddenly ends up in our tuna fish. But it's not just about whether we are able to eat the tuna fish or not, but it's actually a much bigger problem also in, in the US, for example, where there are 300 to 600,000 of children who are born each year with too high mercury content in their blood. And moreover, 8.7 million no, yeah, dollars uh, are used or are lost every year because of people who are not able to work because of uh, learning disabilities that are related to uh, mercury content in their blood. Um, and according to WHO, that they'd say that 50% of uh, the mercury pollution comes from outside the US. So there are some indicators showing that this problem occurring uh, on the other side of the world is actually also a problem for us. So yeah, we just learned to scale the problem up and and because it's sometimes it's really difficult to relate to something that's happening on the other side of the world. So uh, it can be easier if you can relate to it somehow. Then he also told us that we should tell a touching story. And then it's not just about come up with something and lie, but this is actually true that a lot of kids are in contact with this mercury and get really sick. And a lot of people die. Most of the people do not become or get older than, than 40 years old. Um, so if we can tell this story, uh, that's something that people can relate to. And, and we, if we can bring up some emotions, it's just a good way to um, come up. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, then we found we have different kind of inspiration. First of all, we, we, um, we looked into Paul Polak and what he said. And he's a founder of a nonprofit uh, organization or International Development Enterprise, IDE. I don't know if you have heard about it. Uh, but he's uh, doing a lot of projects in the third world countries um, about agriculture and develop different kind of uh, businesses. And we have this video from TEDx. We are not going to show you this video now, but uh, you, if you like to, you can go in and uh, watch it yourself. Um, but he really um, talks about this uh, bottom of the pyramid theory. I don't know if you have heard a lot about that, but uh, that was something we were very inspired by because he says that there's a huge potential to uh, to develop business ideas and businesses um, for the third world countries where we have 2.5 billion people who live with, uh, for less than two and a half dollars per day. So that's a, just a great uh, potential market here. And moreover, we looked into um, uh, IDE, the Tradle Pump, and got some inspiration to our business model uh, because it's built on some franchise uh, yeah, business model. So maybe that could be an idea to look into other con companies' uh, business models. Yeah. Um, then we looked into uh, the patent possibilities. Um, and you can see uh, this graph is not the best resolution, but we have the applications here. And it's a uh, gold mining uh, devices. And on the other axis, it's about the centrifuge, uh, like the te technological um, patents. 
And there was a lot of these kind of patterns. And then there are also some patterns that links the, uh, the applications, the gold mining devices with the centrifuge te technology. But these patterns, or oh, there was one exactly that uh, has just expired. So we saw there was a great uh, opportunity for us to apply for this, pa this pattern. So that was what we did. But we discussed a lot whether we, we really needed this pattern because were we able to protect our product if, for example, if a big, a huge uh, American gold mining company, if they suddenly wanted to develop this centrifuge, what, what are we able to do? We are four students with no money. So, so maybe this was not the best way to yeah, protect our idea. Maybe we could instead uh, try to be the first at market and gain some trust within this community and and yeah, do something else. So that was just a discussion we had and it depends on the product and all that, but yeah. Then we did a lot of simple tests um, and they were done in the beginning of our development phase. And we used it really early to, to prove our concept and we had several tests, but one of them were about the fluidization principle and uh, it's about the particles and how they divide when you add some fluid to it. And then we also tested the, a word I can't pronounce, centrifugal, <laughs> centrifugal forces. Uh, and we used a salad spinner and we saw how the gold uh, divided or how it, uh, yeah. When you spin and see how it ends, or <laughs> where it ends. Uh, yeah. And um, it's a, we think it's a uh, great thing to do to look into other kind of products who have the same function and see how it works and maybe we can use that as tests. Yeah. Then we uh, went to MIT to pitch uh, this idea and it was, we were almost forced by Bert's words. He said, go out there and spread the word. And, go out and try to communicate your idea. And it was a really great learning process. Uh, we got a lot of feedback on our idea and so a lot of people they were asking into this project and each time someone asked you about, about something, you, you realize that you do not know all the answers. So you can keep on getting more data. And it actually went really well. We went to the final and here we have a, a video a really just one minute video with the pitch. And this is Jacob and he's, well, we all spend a lot of time on finding out what kind of uh, words he should use in his pitch. And, and maybe we have to say that we had only been working on this project for maybe one month, two months. So we were not that more longer than you are, but still you can sell your idea where we will. see that we reused a lot of the things we said back then a year later or maybe six months later so yeah. actually right now you can make a pitch yeah. which you can iterate and make it better and better and better and add facts constantly there's not a lot of facts in this pitch because we didn't have the facts but then we just added 
facts and numbers. But the problem is still the same. So, yeah. Um, then we try to develop our competences by attending different kind of events and uh, learn more about how to do business plans. And for example, we went to um, Penn State University and participated in a workshop or a course about uh, how to develop a great business plan. And we also later on in Denmark, Shan and I went to Munich uh, on a trip arranged by uh, CSE Lab. Uh, we went to Münchner Technologie Centrum <laughs> and the Innovation Center Denmark. And uh, it was together with a lot of other students who were trying to start up their own business. And it was really great to get some inspiration and just talk to other people in the same situation because it's a great motivation uh, when you do this project. Um, then we uh, got in contact with Geocenter Copenhagen. Um, and they are some of the few people in Denmark who are actually working with the small scale gold mining. Um, and then they're really experts. They've been in, for example, Tanzania several times. I think they are, they are actually every year. Uh, and they know everything about this. They know something about the culture and, and all the processes and, and the environment and like power relations and all things that's really relevant to know. So in collaboration with some of the people here, we, uh, we made this workshop. We made a design game. I don't know, probably the designers if, yeah, know what that is. But we try in collaboration to come up with different kinds of concepts. And yeah, that was just really great help to involve some experts. And we've got a lot of pictures and maybe next slide. Um, with this help, we were able to understand the context much more in detail, and and yeah, that's everything is about the people, the environment, and what is mercury, where does it come from, and we were able to follow the mercury in more details in all the processes, and yeah, to and we use this of course to uh, develop the business idea, and business model. Yeah. Um, yes, um, then there is the funding. How do you get money? Um, we tried a lot of things <laughs> before we won Winter Cup. We tried uh, ordinary funds. That didn't work. We got no money from them. <laughs> then we participated in Walmart. We participated in Dell. It went all right. We got to the semifinals, but still no money. Um, then we entered the Venture Cup and there we got some money. Um, main reasons why we won Venture Cup, if we have to look back at it, was because of the pitch. It was very simple, it was easy to understand and we did it in Danish, where a lot of the other groups did it in English. So it was more uh, easier to understand and very touching for the and the judges in the final has not read the business plan so it's only from the four minutes their impressions and they often vote with their feelings so it's about communicating it really really simple yeah and after venture cup we got a lot of attention from a lot of different <coughs> organizations um, we got a accounting advice from Ernst & Young. We got a board of advisors from Venture Cup and the Vex Tools. We got contact by the, contacted by the Innovation Environments offering us money, more money, Venture Capital. Then we got office space at the CSE lab because there was nothing at DTU. So CBS was very helpful. And then we uh, got some help with prototyping from DTU. So why did it all end? <laughs> um, first of all, we did, we did not know that we have to create a company before winning, so there was a lot of taxes. 
So there was no money left for this field trip we had prepared with GeoCenter. We needed 100,000 kroner and there was not 100,000 left. There was not enough money for testing equipment. So if we needed to take this project forward, we needed more money. More money means saying yes to venture capital and then giving up some of your company, but also giving up the rights to decide yourself. And then they said, if you want this money, you have to give up your jobs, you have to write your thesis about this, you have to use all your time, because we give you money, you have to give your time. We were not really ready to do this, and we thought about it, are we ready to go out into the bank and say, I will spend, withdraw 50,000 of my own money and use this on this idea, because I believe it is so much. Nah, we're really not. So, we're not ready to spend others' money if we're not ready to spend our own money. So we thought, okay, we'll put this on hold until we are done with our education and then we can rethink, if, are we ready to do it at that time? We all had the same background, so we're all from design and innovation, which means that we are not really that interested in fluidization and centrifugal forces. So working with this product was were a bit boring for us. So that's also one of the main things why this maybe didn't. Yeah. Work. Maybe we should just tell that the problem was something that really interested us in the entire context and yeah. everything. We love so this uh, problem. We love the environment. We love the Africa context. We loved everything about this, except the product was maybe, yeah, a bit too technical for us. <laughs> So, if we have to give some main learnings, it's uh, just do it. People are very helpful. Um, tr even though it didn't work out, it was the best experience in our life. And next time we want to start up something, we have a lot of experience, we have a lot of knowledge. So maybe it's not going to be this product, but then it's going to be something else. Share your idea with other people. Um, first, when you come up with the idea, it's probably not very good. But when you start talking to other people, they will give you feedback, come back and tell you what they think and brainstorm on your idea and you'll develop it over time and it gets much better. And number three, work with something that interests you. Because you have to work with this 24-7, <laughs> so it really has to be something that you think is the most interesting thing in the whole world and you love it. And then the rest you can read from the slide. I'll not go through everything. Then we just have a video, we'll not show it right now. He, his name is Evan Bayer. He took the Inventor Studio course the year before us. He won the Green Challenge, where he won 1 million euro, I think. Um, it's about mushrooms, using mushrooms for isolation or yes, yeah. for packaging material. Um, and it's, he's just great. <laughs> yeah, you can get a lot of inspiration for your pitch in yeah. this pitch. This uh, pitch is 10 this minutes, is so it's a bit long, but it's yeah. really good. If you pick the topics and see how he builds it up, it's really, yeah, you can learn a lot. Then we just have a small video we used for the dill. We'll not show this. It's also uh, four minutes. It's just a picture and voiceover explaining the problem and the product. It's a bit early, but I'm a little cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but then we just have uh, two quotes. Sharon Bell told us this, that it's easier to teach a scientist business than to teach a businessman science. And also that scientists are the best entrepreneurs. So with that, we just want to tell you that uh, just do it. And if you have any questions for us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Is that just gold made without mercury? Yes. All right. <laughs> so we were later on. We were. Where does this uh, interest come from? Yeah, so that that interest in green gold. That was what they asked us in the Venture Cup semifinals, the judges. How do you know this? And then we there is a. Oh, I don't know if you can go that back, but. At one of the slides, we showed a logo from a company called Oro Verde, who buys green gold for um, an increased price and sell it. So it's already a business to buy the green gold without mercury for more money and sell it. That's the only thing they do. They do not have a product. They just buy this gold for more money. So that is proof that there are a market for it. If you don't have a company, it's a personal income. So it's if you have it's the same as if you have a job. You have to pay forty percent taxes. Uh, if you are a student, you get ESU. If you are Danish. Uh, and you are not allowed to earn more than 100,000 a year. I had already earned enough, so I had to pay back all my ESU. <laughs> so just be aware of these things that there is a lot of stupid tax rules in Denmark. <laughs> yes? When you made your prototyping, how did you get funding for that? I think it was yeah, um, we didn't do the prototype, <laughs> but we had a professor here at DTU who made some drawings and we were ready to do it when we got the money, but then we didn't get the money. <laughs> so we didn't actually do it, but we had a drawings for how we would do all the testing. We did a, what's it called, a polystyrene uh, mock-up where we, with a laser printer, did the shape and we coated it with glass fiber and but it's in the US, so yeah. we, they had a fund that we, where we could apply for some money. Yeah. We got money so in the US, we had like a couple of thousand, 10,000 US dollars over there we could use for mock-ups and mm -hmm. these easy testing, but we never did the uh, test equipment in steel or aluminum or something. Because it requires a lot of testing, a lot of different kind of shapes, so we can spend all the money on maybe a couple of shapes, and then we didn't know if they were the right, and so we had to make this decision whether we really wanted to do this or, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like the greatest uncertainty for you was the, the markets uh, part of the enterprise. Uh, and I don't I didn't see did you go to like the leader or all this government paid exploration funds because it seems like this model or this product looks like the, this lifesaver straw is the same type of markets and the same type of funding. Did you go to, to have public money for the We didn't really try to get funding that way but we were talking a lot about making some kind of collaboration but some of the organizations and maybe that would have been the next step, but I don't know if they're just uh, supporting non-for-profit business yeah. or... Yeah, we chose Actually, I'm not to, sure about that. this is a for-profit, we will make money on this. And then it's maybe hard to get these. Yeah, but we also discussed that a lot. In the beginning, we tried to set up a non-for-profit business um, where we wanted to, of course, make profit within uh, the business and then invest in, uh, in new projects or try to go to new locations and start up the business again. Uh, but then we realized that it was easier to do it for profit and because more investors were interested in, in collaborating with you, with you if you are for profit. about uh, this particular presentation compared to where you guys were at on Tuesday is how much they communicated what 
the problem was, what the real value proposition was. A few groups did it a little bit on Tuesday, and I'm sure you'll get to it a bit later on. Uh, but this telling, telling the emotional story, getting the person gripped into uh, uh, this group of smiling, because I told them <laughs> they did a particularly good job because one of their members was a diabetic, and uh, they were talking about insulin pens. Uh, but if you can really get the observer into what, you're, what the problem is, what you're talking about, something that they did very well, and maybe some of your groups here need to work on. And the other thing to know was how many people they brought into the project. I, I reckon I probably saw about 30 different companies, funds, and universities, uh, and most groups here have probably only talked to a, a couple of different individuals or, or um, different customers, so try to get out there a little bit more, talk to different people, see who else and other expertise you can get involved. Uh, we have 15 minutes break now, so if we can come back for 25 past uh, for Rasmus' presentation. <coughs>